Well, hello there, everybody out there in YouTube land. I'm going to say right off the bat that the purpose and function of this live stream, this Halloween stream, is twofold. Number one, of course, I'm here to discuss only the grammar. And anyone who has any grammar questions, feel free to type them in the chat. And the second function is to vet any of those who choose to bring their participation in fiction, opinions, gossip, hearsay, and quantum grammar soap operas to this venue, I will jettison you. So this gives me the opportunity, if I see that you bring something up that has nothing to do with the grammar in the chat, then I will jettison you. As anyone knows who has contacted me, I share the closure of the grammar. I meet you on the geometric level playing field and share the closure. I explain, if I make a claim, I explain it to the best of my ability and the best of my knowledge. And if I make a mistake um, and someone can show me how it's a mistake, what I did wrong and what I can do to correct it and why it's a mistake, I have no issue with correcting it. But no one's really done that. Oh, except for uh, my student, Colon Ricardo, Colon Marseille, who's also a very good friend, uh, he pointed out a mistake in one of my videos, and I did po uh, post a stop and correct video for that, because it's very important that everything is correct with this grammar, and I wouldn't put it out here if it wasn't, because I don't want anyone to get in any, any shipwrecks. This is why I maintain a position of grammar tutor only. I have never claimed to be anything other than a grammar tutor. I don't claim to be a big hero and do big heroic things. What I do in the confidential, in my own personal biosphere, and whatever contracts are there, that's confidential. But I will tell you this, there are no secrets with what I do. Everything on my YouTube channel is everything that I know about the grammar. There's no secrets that... If you come into a workshop, I'm going to tell you something secret that I didn't tell anybody else. No, it's all out there because I feel this should be transparent. Rule one, rule equal with the honor and the grace. Because if someone's keeping secrets, then they're violating the geometric level playing field and the maintenance of the rule one, rule equal, and definitely the performance of the balance of the honor and the grace. So that's that. Does anyone out there have any grammar questions that they would like to pose to me today. I'm here for you to answer it, and I'd be more than happy to do that. And as anyone knows, who has actually used correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, as a performance, will know that it is all in the performance and the ability to convey closure to another individual or another contract party. Just talking about this and that and participating in hearsay and appealing to authority, those things are not the grammar. The grammar is the grammar. And actually performing with it and showing performances is how one certifies one level of knowledge and authority. Like you can look in the description of every single one of my videos. Look at the correct sentence structure there. That's my calling card. I have, I don't even know how many videos a lot. I'm blessed to, to be in a position to do that, to be able to take the time, the now space to create these things and give it to the world so that those who genuinely want to learn can learn. And those are my performances. You don't hear me out here bad-mouthing anyone. You don't hear me out here criticizing other people. The only time I ever do anything that comes close to that is if someone is posing some sort of damage to me personally or trespassing on me personally, then I'll do something about it because I'm peaceful and neutral. I'm here to help, and 
My email communication contract venue vessel is always open, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. I do have a, a um, Facebook group. It's confidential. It's called the colon correct hyphen language hyphen performance period group. And it is a private and confidential group. However, if you search it, it will show up in a search and you're more than welcome to request to board that vessel. There are three questions you must answer in order to board the question. All right, sorry, board the vessel. You must answer all three. I'll get people that come on there and, and they'll answer one. And under the terms and conditions, I don't allow them to board. And the reason is this. This is all part of a vetting process. I set the terms and conditions for all of my contract conveyances, which is something that anyone and everyone can do if they choose. You set the terms and conditions of the contract and then it's up to the other contract parties or potential contract parties, whether they wanna come into join with it or not. So if someone, if I see that someone cannot answer the three questions, even though they are directed to do so in order to board the vessel, then that tells me that perhaps they're not ready to learn something as precise and specific as correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. If I schedule a consultation or something and the person doesn't show up or they don't email and say, hey, I can't make it or I didn't make it or then that tells me that they're probably not prepared psychologically for something as meticulous as correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, because you can't be sloppy with it. It has to be 100% on point. There is no such thing as lazy or casual grammar with this technology. I hold it in the highest honor. It's sacred. It's pure. Now, what someone does with it is up to them. If they want to use a lazy and casual or use cuss words with it, I mean, that's their volition. That's reflective of the person using it, not reflective of the technology. You will not see me doing that for sure. When I started learning this grammar on a personal level, when I started learning it, I stopped watching all other videos. I stopped watching all the conspiracy videos, um, anything else. I just constantly, day in, day out, call on David Eiffel, Wynn, Cole Miller, and call on Russell Heffin, J. Cole Gould videos. Hours and hours and hours a day. I uh, downloaded them as MP3s, listened to them all day long in headphones, over and over and over. What is the meaning of this term stop and correct? Well, that's not so much to do with the grammar mechanics, my friend, musical Armageddon, whoever you are. In general, it just means if something's wrong or creating a damage, a person would necessarily need to stop what they're doing and then correct it and then move on. And you can look at uh, my very last video. It actually says for the stop and for the correct. And it's a perfect uh, illustration of that. There are actually many, many levels to a stop and correct because everything's contract. In the sense of a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, stop and correct. A very serious topic. Um, one could necessarily go to the lengths of creating a correct sentence structure claim utilizing 12B7 through 12B1 uh, mechanics and postal mechanics and so on and so forth and use it as a perpetual case. But again, that's outside the grammar curriculum. But since <clears throat> you asked the way you asked and it is a valid point, I know many people are very curious about these other mechanics that are contingent upon the grammar. That's why I always stress the grammar is the foundation. If you don't have a solid foundation of grammar closure, just like in a house or anything else, if you don't have a solid foundation, it's always gonna be shaky. 
no matter what you do, whatever contracts you make, if you don't have closure on what it is you're doing and you don't have a solid foundation, your footing's going to be shaky. And that's going to, that's going to, that's going to be evident to anyone you're talking to that you don't have closure on it. I mean, if you, if you walk into a situation and someone asks you a question, like you syntax a document and say, that's adverb verb. And then the other person says, well, what do you mean that's adverb verb? And then you say something like, well, Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller said this was adverb verb. What do you think they're going to say? They're going to raise an eyebrow and be like, okay. <laughs> but if you can explain to them and give them closure as to what an adverb is, what a verb is, where the modification comes from, why it's modification, so on and so forth, they may not know what you're talking about, but they will be able to sense that you know what you're talking about. And I find that 9.9 .9 times out of 10, when that happens, they leave you alone. What does conspiracy mean syntax? Well, conspiracy by itself is a pronoun. That is... Uh, that is the syntax of that word by itself. All right, so we're coming up on the 21 minute mark. I'm gonna stop. And um, by the way, I think Michael Revolta means par se. And so what you could do is go to etymology online, Michael, and look up the word conspiracy, and then you would find out for yourself what it means. How do you study par se? Well, Derek, I have a parse playlist and I have a video on there that tells you exactly how to how I do it, which you can follow if you wish. Pretty much every single question, grammar question that would be asked here in this forum is answered on my YouTube channel. I took the time to make the videos. All you have to do is take the time to study them. I appreciate everybody and your viewership. And I'm probably going to leave this one up just for everybody. And uh, I hope everybody has a great Halloween. Thank you.